Hey, hey. Hey, bro. Hey. Well, are you enjoying prison roleplay? Oh, hell yeah. It's fun to be, be bad boy. Tell us about your dream role as a rapist and murderer. Um, like, that was a long run for you. You can chew while you talk. Sorry, this thing is so broken. This tripod, it's ridiculous that they try to make us use this tripod. I can't believe this thing. Sorry, go ahead, Bert. One of my dream roles is when the... Um, this, if they don't fix this handle... I know. I know. Lose. I'm sorry. We have, we're spending so much money on this production, and the handle on this tripod is cracked. I can't believe this. Forgive me. One moment, please. Okay. All right, go ahead. Uh, two of my dream roles to be to be played is so uh, a um, a murderer on episode long over as where I'm a serial killer that targets young women and a child molester that preys on young girls uh, under the guise of a gym coach. I seem nice, sweet, and normal first, but the plot twist on the bad guy. All of the separate roles were like someone seems so nice, sweet at first, and then it's real that they're the bad person the whole time. And there were little clues in the beginning that made you. That you didn't suspect before, but then we watched it over again. You realize the clues were there the whole time. That's what, that's what I love. When the signs were there all along, it just it just didn't really until the truth was revealed, and we look back on it. You realize it was obvious the whole time. These are the rules I love to play. Where the person seems nice, sweet, and charming at first, then plot twist, they're the bad guy. Are you subverting who you really want to be and channeling it into an acting role? Um, first I am now is like a nice. Sweet, normal guy. I'm a little creepy and weird. Um, I've always been creepy and weird, but I'm hot as fuck now. So therefore, it's fine to be creepy and weird where you're attractive. <laughs> that, that thing you, I'm sorry, that thing you were saying earlier had me cracking up and I can't, the, can, the thing with the candy. I know, I know. <sighs> Bert, I'm so sorry. We were just, we were joking about the, uh, the way that they were running with the candy earlier was just so funny. Okay. Oh. All right, Bert, <clears throat> I'm back in business here. Why do you have crumbs all over your face? Hmm? Me? Yeah. Oh, I think I was eating popcorn. And yeah, the first things. Do you like popcorn? Yeah. <laughs> I like popcorn, pretzels, and Pepsi. Popcorn, pretzels, and Pepsi. All things that start with a P. Yeah. If it's more x ray, I'll say pussy. But if your name is. Hell yeah, Bert. <laughs> we'll cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. What was that, Andrew? I'm just gonna grab some water. I... Well, I'll grab, I I I'll grab you a Coke. I'll grab you a Coke. Pepsi? Pepsi? Yeah. A lot of I got you, Bert. Right now. Can you repeat that one more time? We are gonna cut this. Okay, we're gonna cut this short real quick, Bert, but we're gonna grab you in a minute, okay? So okay. why don't you go back to jail and we'll grab you when it's time to continue. Okay? Cool. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I guess I have a bit of a slight bad boy is uh, too afraid to show due to like societal standards trying to be like squeaky clean as much as I can to an extent so that for the, like, the acting roles where I play the bad guy or the subversive um, uh, villainous element are ways I can really express my darker nature, so my personality in within the com the context of acting. There is like a safe release of emotions that I've been holding on to uh, personality traits I've been trying to repress where I just let it all out in the role. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there were no consequences, how crazy would you get in real life? Oh, you want to know how crazy I can get? Right. I do. Okay. Well, let's just say, if I could do anything I wanted to and totally get away with it, so many women, so many people would be harmed. Mm -hmm. But luckily, rules exist, and that's why I keep it on the straight and narrow. You're a good guy. Let it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you do? 
uh, take what I want, do what I want, not care at all what people think of me or what, how they feel about what I do, live my life openly and unapologetically no matter what. When you if say you, take what you want, what do you mean by that, Bert? If I want something, I'll just take it. Like if I want a job, I'll just go in and demand it, and they'll just give it to me. If I want a role in a movie or a TV show, go in and just get it. If I want, you know, if I want some other stuff. What's, what's personal, other stuff? You know, some physical intimacy with a nice, sweet thing. Can you elaborate by physical intimacy? All right. If I want to get some pussy, then I'll fucking get that pussy. Even if she says no or whatever, it doesn't matter. I want it, so I'm going to get it no matter what. And she'll like it. <laughs> Tough. That's just the way it is. What Daddy Bert wants, Daddy Bert gets. What was life like for you in middle school? In middle school, I was creepy and weird, and also not very attractive. I was starting to get acne on my face, so I was pretty much invisible to like all the other kids. Did well in school academically, didn't have much of a social life, or any real interest outside of that. I watched TV, played video games, read comic books, typical nerdy stuff. It wasn't until like a couple of years ago when I decided to um, um, slowly, slowly reinvent myself with getting more in shape, developing other interests, like with um, heavyweight boxing, bodybuilding, weightlifting, and then uh, try more things that are outside of normal personality, like being a firefighter. This is something I never dreamed of ever being before until recently, and now I can't wait to be a kick-ass firefighter. Who do you have fantasies about in the house? Um, so far as uh, the remaining nine, um, Alex is one I think of the most, but also having some feelings for Missy as well. She's sweet and nice to me, and I think she feels somewhat the same way. May not see sins at one, but it has, it'll do for now. Alex has just confirmed that he's straight, but he's cool with being my bro, which I appreciate. Even if we get physically close, I'm cool with him being his, with us being friends and us being close, because, you know, you he's my bro no matter what. I'm sorry. Do you want to be more than bros with Alex? In an ideal world, yeah. I like to be more than bros with Alex. I mean, I, despite his disturbing flaws, he's actually quite sweet when he wants to be. And I feel like he's a genuine, deep person that I'd like to get to know more of. And I hope that the longer we're here together, the longer I can learn more about him and the closer we can get. Do you have any dark, evil fantasies about Alex B? I mean, he seems like he'd be a freak in bed, so, like, it'd be nice if I can tie him up and do some stuff to him, you know, for my own little pleasure. Are you feeling better now than you were a couple of days ago? What was weighing so heavy on your mind? Well, it was, um, when I got here, um, everything seemed cool and okay and normal. Then I learned about the AI, um, computer thing, and then, um, I started to notice stuff around me. For example, uh, for sponsors that we have, uh, Mr. Beast, Chocolate, Dude Wipes, Him, and um, Manscaped, they're all male-centered type of products, which I found interesting. And originally there were seven males and five females, so I thought, okay, interesting. And so far all the prize winners have all been males, not a single female. And, when, and also another thing I noticed, when people are picked to like give long speeches or to speak in front of a crowd, it's usually the males that are given priority. Very, very few times females, as well as picking leaders for teams, mostly males. Most all the cast are males. Um, all, all the crew are males, and this whole mansion seems like it was built for a group of males to train and work here, like a police academy sort of thing. So I was wondering if this was actually some type of like queer male dating show. Mm -hmm. And if so, then what, what are the women doing here? There was a point where I thought maybe these females were actually crew members in disguise. Because it seemed like the focus is on dudes, dudes, dudes. To the point I was wondering, what is going on? Is this like, is this like more than I thought it was? But then after learning about what's really going on, now I realize that I can just let my hair down, so to speak. And be my and be have fun with the role, be myself, you know, and make it engaging. After this show's over, do you want to go on a queer male boy dating show? That does sound like fun. Going on a queer male 
Um, Dane Show sounds like a blast. Uh, I think it's like The Bachelor, but it's for um, males, male, like a heteronormative type of thing. Maybe one for two bros to like go on a date together or like to get to know each other. That sounds like it'd be fun. Right on. Do you feel like you are evil? Evil? Mm -hmm. I mean, what is evil anyway? I mean, evil is just based on what society perceives evil to be. Or I would just say I'm just open and honest about what I want and what I desire. How would you feel if I told you that there could be a queer male coming up the stairs any second? I'll be excited. Is he hot? It's for you to decide. Okay. Well, I can't wait to see him. Are you going to invite him into your prison cell? That yeah, sounds like it'll be fun, yeah. I mean, I mean, I could use a nice, sweet little boy to be my prison bitch. You better not drop the soap in front of me. <laughs> you know how it goes. Or the popcorn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you wish Ted was in your prison cell? That would be nice. He would be the perfect prison bitch. Sadly, he's no longer here, so... I guess to make do what I have. Do you think it's weird that he broke both of his wrists? I did wonder about that. A theory I have is that maybe Ted was either asked to leave the show and this whole storyline with him breaking his wrist was like, can he wait to write his character out of the series without having to like, full, like um, fully eliminate him through like a whole elimination round? I also said that maybe he might have wanted to leave after the whole breakdown he had about having to vote against... Um, Ian in the, in the original, the first elimination round. So maybe going to take the pressure more he doesn't want to go home, but they need to figure out a way to get rid of his character, so they have to just like make up a story about him breaking his wrist. It seemed really convenient that he this incident occurred when nobody else was around, none of the other cast members, and supposedly the crew, and then there's no evidence of any type of injury in the basement, in the gym. I didn't see any blood or, or sweat or anything that would imply physical injury. So one thing I was wondering is this was that whole thing made up just for drama, like to have the the cast and contestants mourn Ted and feel sorry just to like milk the drama for the reality show um, engagement. What do you want to get out of the show? I like to give fame, uh, friendship, followers, and collaborations. One of the things I plan to do, if I, for some reason, plan to get the, be the last one saying, win the 50 grand prize, I would ideally um, like to split the 50 grand among the 10 remaining cast members so that each person gets something, like 5,000 each for the 10. And I can be okay with not getting any money, it's fine. I don't want the others to feel like they waste their time being here for six weeks away from the friends and family technology, only to end up with very little at the end. So I want to make sure it's worth it for them. How do you think thoughts like that and also think about raping and killing people? I guess I'm complicated that way. Some things I find reprehensible that most people would be okay with, for example, fat shaming, I find it insanely reprehensible, especially fat shaming a young girl, but most people here seem cool with that. Well, things like uh, murder or like sexual assault or like, what I'll call it, um, false pretenses, to me, it can be okay if the person wasn't aware of what they're doing was really all that egregious, although... Say that one more time. It can be, I mean, sometimes things like really heinous crimes, if the person didn't realize what they're doing was wrong, for example, like sexual assault, the girl was like tipsy or drunk, and he sh thought that she was interested in him sexually, so he decides to go for it, and then later he finds that she would take consent, he feels guilty, he feels bad, but he didn't realize what he did was wrong in the moment because he thought that she really wanted him. That's why that is, is right past. It was like, I can kind of wrap my head around it, and I don't think that person's a bad person. He just made a really foolish, not very thought out choice. Do you want to have kids one day? But if there were no laws, wouldn't you just want to rape and kill whoever you want? Um, even though I just call myself Daddy Bert, I do not want kids. <laughs> At least not right now. Uh -huh. The last thing I want is a child. I mean, being called daddy by some hot young thing I'm trying to fuck is cool, but being called daddy by a child is just disturbing. Mm. Freaky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but don't you want to rape and kill people? As a character. You don't actually want to do that? 
not in real life because I don't think I can handle the guilt and the negative consequences of my actions. Mm. But within the character, with the concept of a fictional character, where the consequences are not real and nothing really bad happened to me, and is in a perfectly acceptable concept of acting, then it's completely fine. But you would feel guilt if you did it for real. In real, actual life, yeah. that's happening right now. Yes, I think at some point I'll probably feel guilty, especially if she confronts me about it out loud and makes me realize the seriousness of what I've done, then I think it will weigh on me. Everybody's what a fucked up person I am and I will like be like, oh shit. And then I now feel like a shitty person and I'll feel like not wanting to interact with anyone and just crawl into a hole hoping to disappear. How clear in your head is the line between the fantasy stuff and the real stuff? To me it's very clear. The difference between fantasy and real life is that Real life makes sense. It always makes sense. Fantasy can be made up as long as the writer has ideas and creativity. So therefore, you can do so many things in fantasy that you could not possibly do in real life, either because it's impossible or not very plausible, or it would not be a good idea to do so. Are you saying that you wouldn't actually rape somebody? In real actual life, no. That would be completely inappropriate, completely problematic, and it would just make me look terrible and bring consequences upon me that would not be fun at all. You would, and you would feel guilt? Yeah. Like, especially if the whole world was calling me a rapist because I'm a registered sex offender and my life is over and, like, everyone hates me and no one wants to talk to me again. That is not worth all that shit. Pretend that the camera is a queer male who holds the key to your prison cell. How would you convince him to let you out? Okay, I would, like, seduce him with my soft, seductive eyes, my warm, charming smile. So pretend that the camera is a queer male with the key to your cell and convince the camera to let you out. Hey man, I uh, hope you're doing well. I'm Bert. You can call me Daddy Bert if you like. Uh, I'm stuck in this prison cell, but I uh, don't know. Just need to like, take a piss. So it would be cool if you can like, you know, let me out. I'll probably be right back, you know. Like, it's like a black hole piss, you know what it is, man. <laughs> so. After you let me out, you know, I can take a piss and be right back and you and I can chill for a bit, you know, we get to know each other. You seem like a cool dude. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> your theories about what the show might be, Bert, your various theories, do you think maybe you shouldn't tell the other contestants about those? Yes, I realize now I should not be telling you because this is my theories because it's become very clear that I was getting on everyone's nerves with how, like, it's not like a conspiracy nut and I don't want to give that vibe in the house. So I decided to, if I write any theories, keep them to myself and just write them down when I can just so I can have it written down, have a memory of it. Otherwise, I'm not going to tell anyone about my theories. Even if they say, like, it's okay for me to tell, I still won't tell because, like, I don't even know if any of them are even true or not. It's just stuff that I'm observing around the house and just making shit up as I go along. I mean, none of the theories I have could possibly be true, maybe. Maybe that will turn out to be, because, like, I, I've never been on a reality show before. I watched very little reality shows. I've never been watched one from beginning to end before. So I have very little idea of what's actually going on. So things that may seem normal to other people here seem weird to me. So, I mean... There was a time where I thought maybe this was like a low-key mental institution with just much better amenities. I didn't know what. I was just making theories. My brain was come with like creativity, creative imaginative theories. So, yeah, either way, if I get a theory or suspecting this out of the ordinary, I'm not going to tell anyone my theories because they're clearly getting tired of it. I can tell it by the or sigh, roll their eyes, and like give body language. So that's going to be for me, me and me alone. Good idea. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Wow, great, Bert. Okay. Thanks, Bert. Fantastic. Back to jail with you. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Bert. Thank you. Thanks, Bert. No problem.